This morning on Wake Up With Hope, we have a special musical feature, an inspiring message from John Bradshaw, and a versatile cashew cream recipe from the healthy foodie. Plus, the master stroke is back to take us on an artistic journey. Stay with us. Good morning and welcome to Wake Up With Hope. You know, we're so thrilled that you're joining us this morning. Absolutely, friends. We are so happy you're here. It's not only Monday, but it's also June 19th, the date that marks the end of slavery in the United States and commemorates African-American freedom. And of course, we can all find true freedom in Christ, no matter what others may try to mm, do to any of us. That's right. And there's something else that must end. You know, today is National Day for the Elimination of Sexual Violence mm -hmm. in Conflict. You know, a day to raise awareness about about sexual violence and conflict and think of ways to end these crimes. And you can help by learning more about these crimes and spreading awareness. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Friends, our program is dedicated to helping you keep the hope of Jesus in all you do. And today's program is no different. We have lots in store for you today. So let's look back at what took place on this day in history. On this day in history in 1865, in what is now known as Juneteenth, Union soldiers arrived in Galveston, Texas with news that the Civil War was over and slavery in the United States was abolished. A mix of June and 19th, Juneteenth has become a day to commemorate the end of slavery in America. Despite the fact that President Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation was issued more than two years earlier, on January 1 of 1863, a lack of Union troops in the rebel state of Texas made the order difficult to enforce. Some historians blame the lapse in time on poor communication in that era, while others believe Texan slave owners purposely withheld the information. Whether the information was purposely withheld or there was indeed poor communication, today we have no doubt that slavery indeed ended in America. Slavery is always one of those topics that makes you cringe as you think about the horrors people face simply because of their skin color, something they had absolutely no control over. But there is something that as human beings we all have in common and cannot necessarily control on our own. And that is our propensity to sin and the fact that our human nature can become sinful. However, in spite of this, God sees us as we can be redeemed in Christ. You know, he makes it possible to, to, to change our natures as we invite him to work in our lives and transform us to be what he created us to be, a reflection of him. Amen. Well, this morning we're making chia seed pudding mm. four different ways with our friends from Ready, Set, Cook. Let's go. <music>
Have you ever wondered how Peter could deny Jesus not just once, but three times? Well, this morning, Neil Schofield takes us on an artistic journey through the denial of Peter. Let's take a look. Caravaggio painted the denial of St. Peter in 1610. Like many of his works, this painting uses light and dark to highlight the key characters. The soldier is in the shadows, but the face of Peter is well lit. In fact, his balding head, it reveals much of his face. A face that has tears rimming in his eyes. But paradoxically, also conveys deception and defeat. The two fingers of the servant girl point at Peter. The soldier points with just one. Caravaggio did this to symbolise Peter's three denials of Christ. Meanwhile, Caravaggio has Peter's hands pointing inwardly as if to say, Who, me? Just as Jesus predicted, Peter denied knowing him three times. But here's the good part of the story. Jesus knew exactly what Peter had done, but Jesus wasn't angry. He looked into Peter's eyes with sadness, love and compassion. And that look changed the heart of Peter. The Bible says he went out and wept bitterly. In the painting, the servant girl is looking away. She's not even looking at Peter. She's hardly even looking at the soldier. Light shining on her face. It's as if the artist wants us to imagine what's happening in her mind. Why? Could it be that this lady has also looked over and seen the face of Jesus? Well, we don't know. But there's a growing thought that Caravaggio is showing us a woman overwhelmed by God's love. Right there in the heart of his painting. The key message I get from the denial of St. Peter is not the sins of Peter or the accusations of the woman. It's the love and transforming power of Jesus. It's no wonder the Bible says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. God is love. Don't forget, if you're enjoying today's show, share with a friend or visit our website at hopetv.org slash wake up to see more and subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with us. Well, we have to take a short break now, friends, but when we return, we'll have music. And later, John Bradshaw from It Is Written will be sharing an inspiring devotional thought. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope. Uplifting music is great for the soul, and today we want to share a song with you and for you to keep in mind next time you face one of those days. Today's song is No Fear In Love by Endless Praise. We hope you're blessed. I 
still carry this Can you tell me again and again and again Again. There's nothing to be afraid of now. There's nothing to be afraid of now. There's nothing to be afraid of now. There's really no thing. There's nothing to be afraid of now. There's nothing to be afraid of. song will slip through my hands I'm afraid of dancing and the time will bury me alive afraid to go outside take a short break, but when we return, Pastor John Bradshaw from It Is Written will share a thoughtful message from the Bible with us. Welcome back to our morning program. How are you enjoying it this morning? Send us a message on Facebook and let us know. This morning, John Bradshaw from It Is Written is with us here today to share an inspiring message. Hey there, great to see you today. I hope your day has started well. I hope that you've got some special plan today. And if not, maybe by the end of the day, God would have moved in your life in such a way that you'll be able to say, special day, special God, I have been blessed. In Matthew chapter 20, I'd like to look at a Bible story with you today from Matthew chapter 20. It's actually a parable spoken by Jesus. The parables of Jesus were fantastic teaching tools. They're miles deep, they're multi-layered. Not everything in a parable has a direct parallel. Some parables just have some details here and there where you don't need to wrestle with the meaning. But you're gonna find that there's a general thrust, some lessons to be taught, and Jesus, the master storyteller, would use these stories so that we could look in them, find lessons, and then more lessons, 
and be spoken to often by the kinds of things that we wouldn't easily forget. A sower went forth to sow. They all sowed uh, seed in the ground. They weren't going to forget that story very easily, for example, you know. So in Matthew chapter 20, Jesus tells a story about a man who needed laborers, day laborers, really. And he went down to the village square or the marketplace and he said to some fellas, hey, I'd like you to work for me today. I'll give you a silver coin, a denarius, a a penny, depending on your translation. I'll give you a day's wage. And they said, right on. And they got on the tractor or the cart or whatever it was, headed over to the farm and they started working. Later in the day, the man said, I need more workers. Perhaps it was a project he needed to have done by the end of the day. Don't know. He went back to that place and found some more workers. He said, you come with me. I'll pay you what's right. They said, we trust you. They got on the cart, went to the farm, and that was that. Now it goes a little further here. Let me read to you in Matthew chapter 20, and I'm going to find the right verse here, verse 6. Get this. It says, in about the 11th hour, he went out and found others standing idle. The 11th hour, we would take that to mean about 5 p.m. And they were going to work till 6. So he goes out at about 5. He finds some men unemployed. He says to them, why have you been standing here idle all day? They said, because no one has hired us. He said, you also go to the vineyard. Whatever is right, you will receive. Now, it's about 5 o'clock. They're going to work till about 6. How long did it even take them to get to the vineyard? I don't know. Was it five minutes? Was it 10? Was it 15? I don't know. I'm going to say 10. I don't know, but that's just what I'm going to say for the point of illustration. Now, when evening had come, and we take that to be right around 6 p.m., the owner of the vineyard said to to his steward, call the laborers and give them their wages, beginning with the last to the first. Interesting, not the first to the last. And this would make an impact on everybody there. And when those came who were hired about the 11th hour, they each received a denarius. Oh, hang on a minute. That's a silver coin. That's a, that's a day's wage for working, what do we think, 45 or 50 minutes. How do you think the guys hired at 6 a.m. are going to feel about that? Let's find out. But when the first came, they supposed that they would receive more. Well, you would, wouldn't you? Okay, he contracted with us for a silver coin. We've worked 12 hours. Those cats have worked an hour at best. They've got a silver coin. Man, it's payday for us. Is he going to pay us at a coin an hour? One of them said, don't be crazy. That would be excessive. Well, I'm just doing the math. Maybe we're going to get two coins, maybe three, maybe four. Maybe not. And so it says, when the first came, they supposed that they would receive more, and they likewise received each a denarius. And when they had received it, they complained against the landowner, saying, these last men have worked only one hour, and you've made them equal to us who've borne the burden and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, saying, friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Didn't you agree with me for a denarius? Take what's yours, go your way. I wish to give to this last man the same as you. Isn't it lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things? Or is your eye evil because I am good? And the last verse is, so the last will be first. Or I should say the next verse. The last will be first, the first last, for many are called, few are chosen. There's a whole lot there. Now, Jesus is really talking about salvation here. That denarius, that's the gift of everlasting life. That's really what it represents. They answered the call. They were given everlasting life. Now, I I think I want to deal with the second thing first and say this. We tend to think, right, the longer you work, the more you earn. And that's sort of how society works. You work a day, I give you X. You work two days, I give you two X. No problem. But here, I don't believe Jesus is talking about people who have labored like your work at the office or at the factory. Jesus is really referring to people who are laboring in the vineyard. They're working for the master. They are serving him. They're in ministry in some way. 
whether you're a full-time paid professional minister or whether that's something that you do as a calling on your life while you pursue other things, either way. We shouldn't look at that as drudgery. We simply shouldn't. It's a privilege to be in the vineyard serving the Lord. You serve God not because of what you're going to get, but because of what you've got already. And that's the gift of everlasting life. You're looking for ways to give, not ways to get when it comes to the service of the master. No question about that. The other thing is this. Somebody came early in the day and they received a denarius. They received, now thinking spiritually, the gift of everlasting life. Someone comes along at the 11th hour and receives the same gift, everlasting life. But that's good. That's actually really good. So if you're a believer from the day you were conscious until the day you die and you live to be 85, 90, 95, 100 years of age, and someone on their deathbed after living a rotten life genuinely surrenders their life and chooses Jesus, they get the same everlasting life as you. We don't want to complain about. We're just happy that people came and received everlasting life. Nevertheless, the people who came late have lost. That person on his deathbed at, I mean, you pick an age, lost all those years of closeness with Jesus, all those years of peace, all those years of keeping out of sin, lost. They've accumulated scars and war wounds and damage along the way. If you can only get to Jesus late, then get to Jesus late. If it's late and you've not been a follower of God and you want His peace and His presence and His blessing and you want to turn your life over to Him, that's fantastic. Do it now. Don't wait a moment longer. But it's much better if you do it sooner. The longer with Jesus, the better it is. The better your life, the greater impact, the more you can work in the vineyard and encourage Jesus or encourage others to know Jesus. Have a great day today. Remember that God is gracious. He longs to give you the gift of everlasting life. Have a great day. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor John. What words of encouragement to start the day. And friends, thank you for watching Wake Up With Hope today. Now, don't forget to visit our website at hopetv.org slash wake up to learn more about what we have going on. And subscribe to our YouTube channel to make sure you don't miss anything. <laughs> That's right, friends. Be sure to tune in tomorrow morning as well. We have a special feature from The Incredible Journey and another Reflections of Hope episode. Plus, John Peckham will continue his series on knowing God. We can't wait to see you tomorrow. And if you enjoyed today's message, visit hope.study to receive your free Bible study guides designed to help you begin or refresh your relationship with Jesus. Again, that's hope.study. We know you will be blessed and very encouraged. We pray you have a wonderful Wednesday. Now, before we go, we have a Bible promise we want to share with you. And this promise is found in Psalm chapter 23, verse 4. It says, even though I walk, through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Mm. You know, even in your darkest moments, He is there. Even through your most difficult trial, He is there. God is there. You don't need to be afraid. Only call on Him for help, and He will help mm. you. Amen. It's a faithful promise, friends. Keep that, it close to your heart today. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, it's a faithful promise because you're a faithful God. And th that's why we turn to you. Where else can we go to but you? You're the God who supplies us with everything that we need to be able to make it through not only this day, but through life. And we pray, Lord, that you would keep the hope that we have received in our hearts. May nothing take it away from us today. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.